guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today I'm gonna make a little update on my Nelly Eilers, Miltoniopsis, you know, the troublemakers. As you might know, I did lose quite a few of these orchids in the past, and particularly in this environment, because it just so happens these orchids like cooler temperatures, higher humidity, they're finicky, they're not necessarily super fitted to grow in a house. The only thing I did different this time was to put them directly into semi-hydroponics. So it is now time to see how they're doing, if they're still alive, so let's get to it. First, let us start with the Nelly Eiler, because as you might know already, she's my favorite orchid. Pretty shameful I have so much issues keeping her alive. Maybe that's why I like it, maybe it's because it's a challenge, I don't know. This is the, let's call it red velvet, or the entirely red hybrid that just hit the market last year. Unlike other Nelly Eilers, this one does not have that white tessellation on the lip, nor does it really produce it on its petals. It has a velvety texture to it, and the color is absolutely breathtaking. In low temperatures, if it blooms, it has a very intense cherry-like dark red color. The fragrance is the same and the orchid, uh, sadly, is just as finicky as a normal Nelly Eiler. However, though, in my opinion, it is a lot more beautiful. As it was, the Nelly Eiler was my absolute favorite orchid and, of course, the red velvet one surpassed that. It is, really, something I just dream to keep alive. And here is my little Nelly Eiler. As you can see, she does not look all that great. The problem with these orchids is that when you purchase them, they already come with a very poor root system. Then you try to repot them, try to adapt them to your climate, which might not be humid enough, might not be cold enough. Overall, it is a disaster to try and maintain this orchid alive if you don't have exactly the conditions it wants. And offering these conditions in a home can be very, very tricky. So the Nelly Eiler, as it is, needs to go through this process of shriveling pseudobulbs, very tiny growths, accordion-shaped leaves, and you can see mine actually has all of that. Look at this leaf. It is floppy, accordion-shaped, doesn't really look all that great. This is to be expected though. What we're looking for is roots. Did this orchid produce any roots in semi-hydro? Let's take a closer look and see. I don't want to disturb this orchid too much, but I think I can show you here and there that we do actually have some roots started. This is one of them. And as you can see, oh, it actually extends more than I imagined. So I will not try to dig too much, but at least on this growth, yes, we do have hope, we do have a root. This orchid has another growth, which should have roots by now. And behold, what are we seeing here? Yes, friends, these are roots. So I will not go too much into the medium, but I will tell you now, this is a first for me. None of my other Nelly Eilers or Miltoniopsis for that matter actually created roots. They didn't even reach the stage. They would just wither off before they reach that. Now, this is quite recent because for the longest time, this orchid had a very, very shriveled and thin pseudobulb which was this one. And as you can see, we can still see the ridges and the wrinkles. But do you see how plump the pseudobulb is? This happened actually pretty recent, in the past month or so. And I think it is because the root system is starting to grow in semi-hydro inside the pot. So this orchid, yeah, she still has a lot to go through. As you can see, these new growths, they don't look so good. I don't expect them to bloom if they will try to bloom. A little side note, she is actually willing to bloom. If they will try to bloom, I will probably cut the flower spikes off. I just want this orchid to produce a healthy, big pseudobulb and a nice root system first, and then we can talk about the flowers. I'm not about to let her spend her energy uselessly for a mediocre spike. I know we all love flowers and I know orchids bloom so <laughs> irregularly and so less often that when we see a flower spike, it's just hard to let it go. But you have to know that that flower spike drains a lot of energy, more than anything, from the orchid. And when you finally have a Nelly Eiler which is willing to produce roots, it's willing to plump up as such, 
I would suggest that you just cut those flower spikes initially if the orchid is still struggling and wait for the orchid to become adjusted, to become healthy, vigorous, then let her flower. That would have to be my advice to you with these orchids. That is what I plan to do with my orchid. This growth, just look at it. Do you really think it's gonna create beautiful flowers? No, it's gonna make one or two flowers on a very flimsy flower spike not what we want. We want roots, we want nice foliage and pseudobulbs and then we can talk about flowers. So this has been the red velvet Nelly Eiler, but I do have a few more orchids which are problematic. Let's take a look at them as well. And here we have the Oncidopsis francine. Now this is not a Nelly Eiler, but it is a sort of a relative. The Oncidopsis francine looks like a Nelly, but it doesn't have the waterfall on her lip and also the color is a beautiful warm pink. Pretty much that's why I chose the pot a sweet pink for this one because I think it will go so well with the flowers when it will bloom, fingers crossed. The fragrance is yet again a little different than the Nelly Eiler. It has a more Miltoniopsis fragrance to it, more, um, let's say, citrusy vibes. I really, really like this orchid almost just as much as the Nelly Eiler. She is special to me. But behold, it is just as finicky. So as you can see, the pseudobulbs have shriveled a lot. They're kind of thin and of course the leaves are flopping over because they are dehydrated. This orchid was purchased after the Red Nelly Eiler though and it has been repotted let's say a few months ago, two months ago or so in semi-hydroponics. The Nelly Eiler was potted more than that, maybe six months ago. And the progress obviously should not be necessarily as good as the Nelly Eiler considering this orchid, yet again she didn't have necessarily the best root system ever. So let's take a look inside the medium as much as we can without disturbing the orchid and see if we see any good news. And by adjusting the brightness you can better see this. Do you see this little thingy here? That is a root. Okay, I uncovered it a little bit more so we can see it. It is a root tip, it looks spectacular, it looks fresh and very very green when you look close to it. I dug a little bit on this side as well but I didn't see anything just yet and I don't want to disturb things further. So I'll put the medium back and maintain the circuit humid as it was before and I do believe we have a good start with this orchid as well. Oh, this growth, I didn't see anything here, but I'm not sure what's happening deep inside the pot. However, though, that root tip there, that is just such, such great news. It does, however, mean that this orchid needs more time. And let me just adjust the brightness really fast, because indeed, as you can see, the pseudobulbs are still shriveled. The leaves are kind of limp. I mean, not kind of, very limp. However, the orchid is trying. It is producing a lovely root tip and I will do my very best not to compromise it. But I dare say we are on the right track with the front scene as well. The cooler temperatures of winter help us right now and the fact that this setup maintains things very moist but very airy at the same time within, that helps us too and I think it is actually making the difference in my success with these orchids. I'll have a video about watering in semi-hydroponics and all of this tomorrow, I think. So we'll talk more on the subject then, but I do believe the Francine is going to make it. It's going to be okay. Alrighty, so now let's take a Miltoniopsis. And this is the No ID Miltoniopsis that I believe is a hybrid of the Miltoniopsis Phalaenopsis. You can check down below, by the way, the links with these orchids when I purchased them or when I repotted them. And this one I repotted when? A week or two weeks ago. I was expecting the pseudobulbs to go very shriveled, maybe the leaves to go limp a little bit, but <laughs> that's not what happened. Now this orchid had a really, really good root system, but it just so happens that after repotting Miltoniopsis, they tend to go shriveled, they tend to lose roots. This one didn't. This one is actually growing roots and I suspect inside the medium we still have those growing tips that we saw at repotting because the pseudobulbs show no sign of wrinkling, absolutely none. They are just as plump and luscious as they were before I repotted it. So this orchid is an exception. 
I would not count this as a, a success of the medium or of the setup in my environment. I would count this a trait of the soy kit. I looked around the internet for the Meltoniopsis phalaenopsis, the pure species, and I have seen quite a lot of signs that this is indeed a hybrid of that orchid. The pseudobulbs are different, they are plumper, they look more like oncidiums, the leaves are thin and strappy in comparison to other Miltoniopsis, and of course the color and the shape of the flower. But I do believe this species, and maybe even the hybrids of this species, are different. I think they are indeed more vigorous. When I repotted this orchid, the roots were thick. They were nothing like normal Miltoniopsis roots. They were nice and thick and just simply vigorous. So if you ever have the opportunity to see this orchid for sale, either the hybrid, either the species, and you do have a budget and you're okay with trying it out, I suggest you try it out. I'm not saying it is the best Miltoniopsis, I'm just saying I have a feeling this particular Miltoniopsis is more forgiving. I hope I'm right and so far so good, but I'll keep you up to date. And lastly, here we have another Nelly Eiler, which I presume it is the normal Nelly Eiler. It's okay, the more the merrier. I cannot have enough Nelly Eilers, actually. This is the latest acquisition, after I told you I shall never buy Nelly Eilers. Well, the thing is, as I was telling you in that video, this was in the flower shop, forgotten under some shelves. The people there didn't even remember they had it. They made me like this huge discount. I paid a few euros on it. I just could not let it go there. I said, hey, you know what? Might as well go in a nice environment, not under the shelves in a flower shop where nobody knows about her anymore, right? So I purchased it, repotted her, and um, yeah, she went through the motions of actually having the shriveled pseudobulb. She's very, very new, so I don't expect the pseudobulb to plump anytime soon. I'm just looking for roots at this point, and I think I need to get you in a lot closer. There we go. Do you see this little tip here? Yep, that is a root. And yet again, this orchid didn't have the best root system. You can see foliage, not very droopy just yet, but she's new. She's gonna go through that as well. It's just one root at this point, so I'm not expecting miracles, but we are definitely on the right track with this orchid. And mind you, we're still in winter. It's still kind of cold and nice for them right now. Summer will come, but I really hope that in the summertime I will get them adjusted and hydrated. Last year I couldn't. I purchased my Miltoniopsis and Nelly Eilers in the cold season and I was hoping for them to have enough roots to survive the mass dehydration of summer. And even though I do have high humidity in this climate, even though I don't keep my orchids outside in the heat, even though, even though, there isn't enough difference between day and night within temperature in the summertime. No matter what, these cold growers will suffer. I can only make the suffering bearable by offering hydration. That's really important because this orchid will lose water. If it doesn't have enough roots to always make up for that water loss, she's lost. That's what happened last year. I could not in the entire winter manage to form roots on these orchids enough to keep them hydrated in the summer and poof in the summer they all died. So this is why I'm a little hopeful this time and I'm taking care of these roots like they're the most important thing in the world because they are at this point. So it's still January, we still have time until May, June, until the warmth starts to kick in. So almost six months, right? So in this amount of time, I need these orchids to have proper root systems. And for the very first time in semi-hydro, it is happening. Last year, not so much. We had issues with the top layer, if you remember. I changed my setup. I repotted them. I put them through stresses again. At the end, the Miltoniopsis started to create roots in semi-hydro, but they were already super depleted. No hope for them. That is that. I think this time I finally got it right. I hope so, I hope so. Hopefully in a few months I'm not gonna tell you, hey, guess what, they died. But yeah, fingers crossed. I like how things are going right now. I'm happy and stoked about the Red Velvet and Francine. This as well, the Miltoniopsis, uh, she's, she's the queen. She's doing a really good job with her root system. So that has been the update. I am pretty excited about it. And as I was saying, hope in a few months I'm not gonna film some bad news, <laughs> right? 
Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully tomorrow we're gonna have a little discussion about watch ring and semi-hydro and changing the rules of care a little bit. Uh, if not, we'll see, we're gonna answer some questions. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. And you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.